Hey y'all, it's your girl, Miss Quad, honey, and I am filling in for my girl, Claudia Jordan, today, and we are back on TGIF. All right, now we are here to spill the tea and break down all of the biggest headlines and everything that's hot on social media. Woo! Now let's just sit back, relax, and let's sip this hot pipe and tea. Woo! Please welcome my man, Al <laughs> Reynolds. What's what? going on, Claude? It's so good to see you in that chair, beautiful. Hey, let me tell you something. It's always good to be seen and not viewed. Oh, <laughs> well, you're going to be seen and viewed today because we're going to put you in a hot seat in a minute, but go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. But I got to tell you, we have our special co-host for all of the week. Armand Wiggins, what's good, baby? How you feeling? Good, good. How are you? You look amazing. I'm excited to be here with you, so it's going to be a good time. But you are looking fabulous. I am really feeling that black, honey. It's a man in black. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I can't wait to get into some things. We're going to feel this, the energy tonight. Is this your first time working with Armand? Uh, I mean, with Armand, a quad? It is, it is, well, put on your seatbelt, baby. Put on your seatbelt. He's he's a wild one right there. Uh, listen, <laughs> Quad, I got my seatbelt on for her because I, I feel like she's ready to get going, baby. I'm ready. <laughs> First and foremost, what are you fellas drinking tonight? Well, you know, I'm working with Amon this week, so I'm on a little bit of vodka tonight. <laughs> Look, no chaser, just a squeeze of lime. And for me, I'm, I got the um, Terramano tequila and some Red Bull just for you, Quad. I'm ready to get into some things tonight. Well, honey, I got to tell you, tequila, baby, made me do some sh some things that struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Today, my mom fixed me something nice. I don't know what's in here. It's the mother's surprise. And she, she probably Ooh. got one for me, though. She's got that brown liquor in there. That's what the mama yes, drinks. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, before we get into some of this hot pipe of tea, Al, you graced the Independent Spirit Award blue carpet recently and interviewed so many talented folks. Let's take a look. All right, Fox Soul, the award season is winding down and we only have a few shows to go. But tonight we're here to the 39th annual Independent Spirit Award. What does it feel like to be on this blue carpet today? Uh, unreal. Right. This is something, honestly, that you dream of as a kid. Oh, it feels incredible, I think, to be recognized by the industry, by film independent. I mean, I feel blessed. I'm real glad to be here. I love this award show. An incredibly surreal surprise and very rewarding. I, I never could have imagined that this is going to come out of this little project called Jury Duty. Wow. We call it the little show that could. Tell me, did the strike affect your project at all, the project that you're involved in? So, yeah, everything came to a halt. I think it profoundly affected everybody in the industry. Street. We all definitely felt that. <laughs> the way that the nonfiction community got affected by the strike is everybody was affected. It was challenging, but I, I think it was an important fight to fight. You know, you got to know what's important and when it's time to make sacrifices. It, you know, it's Black History Month and we have some amazing nominations. We have Jeffrey Wright and Coleman Domingo and two black females, which is something that we're super excited about. Tell me, who are you rooting for? <laughs> I am uh, going to take a page from Issa Rae. I'm rooting for everybody black. I'm rooting for everybody black. I mean, Issa said it best, rooting for everybody black. I mean, those are two, like, phenomenal actors, and just hearing um, both of their stories or how they came up was, you know, very inspirational. How are you celebrating Black History Month? Taking up space, being my best black, authentic so, self. All right. So what I like to do is I like to celebrate others, but I also like to be educated. What would you tell that 10-year-old when you were a little girl, given your experiences and where you are right now? Keep doing it. That you, Obviously, you're doing the right thing because you're going to get right here. For everybody who thinks it's overnight, it's not at all. It's a mental game, and you have to stay encouraged and be passionate about what you do. We all think if it doesn't happen for me, if this project doesn't happen, if I'm not famous by 21 and I don't have a house or a car, that's not what it's about. It's about tapping into your best self and continuing to push yourself to do your best work. All right, Fox Soul and Soulmates, that's it. That's all for the 39th Annual Independent Spirit Awards. Oh, Al, that was an amazing way to end Black History Month and a fabulous way to kick off Women's History Month. Wasn't it though? But let me tell you, you can't imagine how electrifying it was to be there on that carpet. The carpet was about a, a, a city street block long and it was an evening of black excellence. And it was the best way to close out um, 
a Black History Month, but you know what? The, all the Black women that was on that carpet, you had Rashida, you had um, Dawn, you had A.B. Rockwell, you had Erica, you had Aisha. It was the most Black females nominated for an award that we've seen in the last 15 years. How exciting was that? And, and it was even more overwhelming to ask them questions that related to our culture and being the only reporter on the carpet that was of our color they love the fact that they can talk about their experiences as actors truthfully without masking it right with other with other carpet interviews so for me to see that long line of black actors actress directors producers and creators all nominated on the carpet as, and stopping and talking to fox soul it just gave me goosebumps and you right and the first award what made it so great was the first award went to a black female divine and the yeah. last award but that was for best supported and the last award went to a black male jeffrey wright which was for best um best role i mean best uh actor i mean best lead performance so could yeah. you have asked for a better carpet to cover squad think about that it was amazing speaking of covering who did you enjoy interviewing most you know, Erica, Erica is that woman and, and Rashida just gave us so much love. Her, her breakout. Oh, she gave me some tea. So they're rebooting good times, everybody. And she was mm. able to tell us. I'm so excited that good times is coming back. Rashida spilled that tea. She's doing it to see Aisha Tyler on the carpet. Who's been in the game for 20 years and still producing now behind the camera and being nominated was amazing. Boots was amazing. I mean, First of all, black women just are amazing. Interviewing them, it, it, it's just an experience that you can't explain. And just to have them recognize us as a, as a platform is what warmed my heart the most. Well, job well done, Al. You did that. Thank well, you, now we're thank you. into these topics, honey. And how did I get on the roster, child? Oh, my <laughs> <laughs> it's only right that we go ahead uh, and get off with Miss Married to Medicine, honey, because it was a lot of hot pipe and tea being spilled. During the reunion part one, I expressed that I felt like Phaedra Parks, child. Y'all know Miss Phaedra Parks, honey, came over from a real housewives of Atlanta. Now she's down to the Married to Medicine. She I felt like she really turned her back on me when she said, why would she attach herself to the Titanic? I said, oh my God, child, I did not know that I was the Titanic. I thought I was the doll who helped anchor her for the next three years on Married to Madison. I'm just saying, mm. a little shady. Mm, yes, it was. I felt like what I was just expecting that I deserve a tad bit more <sighs> loyalty. What do you think about this, Armand? Oh, Okay, so after hearing what you said, I, I agree. I feel like if you anchor no, somebody, no, tell on, the truth. I'm about to tell the truth. I'm about to tell the truth. <laughs> I feel I like if, I, no, I feel like if you anchor somebody on a show, um, there is a there is a loyalty that is needed and that's necessary. Then, but my question is, do you think because a lot of the women do come for you because you're so vivacious and they feel like they want you to be humbled? Do you feel like? Phaedra is like, well, I'm new to this. I kind of got ostracized on the Housewives. I don't want to come in and pick up your battles and all these girls hate me when I don't really have much stake in the game. You know what I mean? So it's kind of a catch-22 because I kind of feel her like, she like, well, I'm new here. I don't want to create a bunch of enemies. You kind of been here a while, you know? So I'm trying to keep my spot. Well, I do hear what you're saying in regards to that. <laughs> I do understand that she wants to keep her spot because the Candy Bears bitched her for five years. So I do understand her wanting to mm. keep her married to Madison. However, how could she come in if she's brand new to this particular group? Why would she come in and say, well, Miss Quad needs to humble herself? How do you know that? Where right. are you getting that right. information from? Mm, and she right. had, we had a long standing relationship. And no matter who told me not to deal with her across the globe, especially here in Atlanta, it was my choice to continue to be her friend because she had never done anything to me. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your take on it? You know what, Claude? I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm like you. You know, you and I are kind of the same age. It, it doesn't mean that you have to come in and be my best friend, but mm. you need to come in and show the respect. Like, you don't have to be up under me. You don't have to side with me. You know what I mean? But you do need to show some loyalty and not throw me under the bus like everybody else just to keep your job. But I think you're right. She did get benched by by Candy, and you know, Candy, she missed that check because them ensemble checks are in the middle 
millions above the millions at the time that these ladies do this. And I think that there needs to be some loyalty to the fact that she's back on television, back on an ensemble and making good money. And if you helped her put her in that space, she ain't got to support everything you say, but she can at least you know at least if behind the scenes or you know like support you like you know that's significant to it, me it, it could have at least just been a phone call when right she changed right. her airline ticket but you know what Quad, these this this, this new this new group they don't it's they they don't think like that first they think about themselves first at least in my mm. experience but the truth is this is the way hollywood has turned I don't know what year it has happened, but a lot of Hollywood believes that this is how you're supposed to play the game. Just it's almost like their own big brother or something instead of in real life with real relationships and real people. So, I mean, is that good or bad? The ones that do it seem to be winning. So how bad is it possibly? There's no friends in the game. You ain't learned that yet? Ooh. <laughs> there's no friends. They said no new friends, but there's no, no friends. No new friends. <laughs> there's no friends in the game. There's no friends in the game. You know, so. Well, let's just move right along. Okay, speaking of Phaedra, honey, her ex-husband Apollo got caught cheating on the ring camera, allegedly cheating on his new wife. <laughs> I don't know, child. It says the foot the footage here caught was caught caught Apollo Netflixing or Netflixing and chilling with his mystery woman. They were watching Netflix and chilling. I, I don't know what to say about this. Is this is this shady behavior or what's going on here? I mean, they had the covers. She was quite comfortable. He was relaxed. Seems like he had been there before. Ooh. I don't know what this was about. Shoes off. I'm trying to figure out what did he do? Did he piss her off? Like, how did this get out? And allegedly, they're supposed to be having a baby, too. And I'm like, didn't they? Didn't he just get married about two years ago? So you're already not happy with your wife. Now you're creeping out with a side chick. You got her pregnant allegedly, and now you, you're getting caught up on ring cam. So I'm thinking, like, did he miss a payment? Did he not do his due diligence? Like, what happened here to where you done pissed this woman off? That's the thing. I'm glad I'm gay because you know when women get upset with you, they will burn the whole house down, man, <laughs> and expose it all. Jeez. What did the what 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 is your experience that the gays do? Well, child, they they'll speak out and do interviews <laughs> on you too. Shoot, ask Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard looked into this, honey. Dwight Howard dropped his defamation lawsuit against Mason LJ, who publicly accused him of being bisexual. Oh my God! Sources claim that that the lawsuit was dropped due to Dwight being unable to prove that the claims were in fact a lie. Are we surprised by this news? I'm gonna say that I, you know I'm gonna step in here. I'm, I'm very proud of Dwight Howard. Um, I feel like he's dropping this suit because he, for the first time, or he's tired of using or spending a lot of money to hide his sexuality, right? And this last experience taught him that, look, you can actually get through this. You can get through the rumors. You can get through the lawsuits. You can get through all of this because at the end of the day, do people really care anymore, Dwight? It's been rumbles for years. And I like the fact that he dropped it because I think he's becoming more comfortable with his sexuality. And this shows that because Dwight has spent millions in the past, allegedly, to make stories like this go away. To see him step from that and start to walk what appears to be in his truth by some of the things that he's posted about, what happens in his bedroom is his business, who cares, this is his life and he's gonna live his best life. He's saying what he needs to say without actually saying it. And I support him because for <laughs> a black male NBA athlete who has all of these like stereotypes on him and not able to really live his truth, life this is this is a this is like a rebirth so instead of us chastising him for that i think we should support him because we need to create an environment where more men whether you are gay bisexual or trans can walk in your truth with your head held high and not <laughs> down because you feel like you're doing something that shouldn't be done Come on, real quickly, I just got to get your two cents in on it. That was a beautiful soliloquy, monologue, <laughs> wherever we're going with that. But the facts are this. He had to drop that because he had already admitted in his new lawsuit that he's into sex parties, threesomes, transgenders, 
and all of these other freaky things, okay? So he's already in a, he's in a new lawsuit. So he tried to make it seem like this guy, Mason, was lying about all these allegations in 2018. However, just for it to come back up last year that he was, in, in fact, into it, and actually he was doing this stuff while he had his son upstairs sleep. Yeah, that's six years ago. Six years ago, he was in the closet. Six years ago, he wasn't comfortable with his sexuality. So he did try to, I just said he masked his sexuality with lawsuits so that people would, so it wouldn't get out. So I think don't, don't, don't down a man for his change. Celebrate his change because it motivates others. It really does encourage no. others. He's not the only athlete, the only black male athlete in the game or in the business that's bisexual or that prefers trans women. It's okay to let them be themselves and we have to create an environment to allow them to do it. I, I, I know that I've been in this position and I can't be on this platform and not applaud somebody for taking a step to encourage others. But I, I gotta push back just a little bit because I think that it's not fair for the person with the fame and the money to use and exploit and, and take advantage of, uh, you know, a Mason. And then all of a sudden when they come and speak out because they don't have the power, they don't have the access, they don't have the influence, people automatically assume they're a clout chaser, they're a liar. And then you try to take them to court to diminish their story when in fact their story is true. Yet this young man got trashed in the media, misgender, as a transgender, he's not a transgender, he's a gay man. And okay. people wanted to believe that he was a clout chaser looking for money when in all actuality Dwight Howard was looking to bust a nut oh my god today okay what? but I, I like I said that was that was six years ago yeah that but we can't we ago. can't we can't call Dwight so people Howard can't, people, and can't throw, change, and then, people can't change people can't change and grow you just said that you committed the fraud you lied and 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 went to jail for getting a car out of your name are we supposed to judge you now for what you did then no Armand we take it and we say you know what that's cool you learned and you grew and you're no longer that thief that liar and that fraudulent <laughs> person Period. Oh, we got, we got, Claude, we got to go to break, baby. Uh, Come on, take us all through. Funny. It's really hot piping tea here, right here on TGIF, honey. But get into this. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about Kanye. Is he trying to step out on his wife? And later, a mother shares how she feels about unconditional love. Keep it right here, baby. It is hot under the collar. <laughs> Please welcome our special guest host, T.S. Madison. Hey, y'all. Hey, soulmates. Y'all still my friend? T.G.I.F. <laughs> well, you make me giggle like a schoolgirl. Live and interactive. Y'all been flirting all week, and it has not gone unnoticed by the soulmates, so might there be a little carryover after this a little situation? On Fox Soul. I will go visit Al wherever he is. He can take me out to dinner, and he can pay for my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men. Take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you and we'll figure it out.
Oh, my God, today, baby, we have to show you my we need to look at it. it is everything here on TGI. But listen, TikToker Bruce Hall posted receipts of Kanye West sliding into his girlfriend's Instagram DM. Did not, yo, got to tell y'all about those DMs. Listen, he wrote back, said, hey, are you in Cali? Are you back in Cali? The girlfriend replied, what? Say what? Kanye then said, are you in California or the States? I wanted to see if you wanted to hang out and listen to my album, my new album. Mm. I don't know. Do y'all think Kanye was being shady or is he just trying to come up with a marketing scheme for his new music? I, I, I'll jump in here. I, do I care? I think it's probably the better question for me. Um, I, you know, I feel like this is just normal Kanye behavior. Like he doesn't care whether he's married or not, or if she's dating or not, he's going to slide in that DM. And then I think he probably helped leak it because he knew that this would make some type of media splash. And here it is, it's back, you know, we're talking about him again on TGIF. Unfortunately for me, and probably it's just being skeptic, anything that relates to Kanye and how he moves, I feel like it's planned or it's intentional. So I don't think these things just get out. I think he kind of helps forward it. And I think he helps amplify it by making sure it's picked up on the blogs. Armand, what say you? I don't think it's that serious. I think Kanye likes an audience. Um, I think uh, Kanye likes people to listen to his music and sit around and he can rant and he can talk about the ins and outs of the industry. And so he, he felt like she may have had some influence and in popularity and he wanted her to be there. I think Kanye West... Everything to him is an artistic movement. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like he just wanted her to be there to listen to his music, honestly. Well, Nothing more to it. That, I, I'm going to take it a step further. Do you really think that Kanye was truly ready to remarry? Or was that a, just a situation where I don't want to be alone and I need to get someone to be a seat filler? I think he's more mastermind than that. I think he mm -hmm. knows that he's going to choose someone. Well, I think he knows that there's a certain amount of time that you have to be seen after a breakup, either out with another woman or, or, or dating another woman or marrying another woman. I think he understands the importance of marketing. And he has all the golden 12 principles down to a science. And I think that's what you see happening right now. Does he want to be married? Clearly he does not. You see, if you want to be married, you don't, you don't treat your wife like how he's treating his wife now. You don't let your wife walk around with stockings on with no panties on looking like a weirdo in some foreign country somewhere like that that's not what you do with someone that you love to me well i feel the same way i mean speaking of bianca and how she's been dressing honey every time i turn around when i look at a picture of her on instagram i say is that a street walker oh i'm sorry <laughs> new wife honey i have to check myself i really do and apparently her father has reported concerns about their marriage and wants to talk to Kanye about it. So it's to say that Bianca's father, Leo, honey, down to the Leo, wants a proper sit down with Kanye and ask him, what the hell is he thinking when he parades Bianca around like a trashy, trashy, naked trophy pony? My God. Okay. Sources say that he knows that there is, you know, something going on here. He thinks, okay, that there's no way in hell that Kanye would allow his daughters to do this. So why is he doing it to his daughter, Bianca? I got to say this. Um, I do think there needs to be a conversation. I do think there needs to be a conversation. I'm confused as to why did he talk to Kanye prior to them getting married, but people do wrong things. They run off and they elope. So I don't know how it really went down. But I got to tell you, I don't believe that Kanye would allow this from any of his daughters and most certainly not their husband. Um, I don't see Bianca as herself. I don't even know if the girl has a personality. Every time I see her, she's looking scared. Like, girl, blink twice if you're being held. <laughs> I mean, and it just, it, it, she just, to me, comes across like AI, like a robotic, like a person that he just tells what to do, what to wear, wh when to do it, and how to do it. That's just me. I don't see her having uh, her own thought process or being a visionary thinker. What say you, Amon? I personally feel like this woman is 30 years old, not 15. She knows exactly what she's doing. And at the end of the day, I think people need to stop hating because if she's got the body, flaunt it. You know, a lot of women wish they could walk around like that and they just, they just can't. 
You know what I mean? So I feel like, you know, if, if I'm with a billionaire, Kanye West, Kim Kardashian's ex-husband, I'm going to show it off, too. I'm going to be his new muse, and he's going to parade me around like the trophy I am. I'm hot, young, sexy, <laughs> vibrant, and I'm outside with Kanye West, baby, and you girls are going to eat it up, gagging, have you girls speaking about it every single week. And that's what they want. It's Hollywood, baby. Fast car, sex, money, and drugs. I'm here for it. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Did I tell you? Let's read. Let's read. Okay, hold on. Calm down. Calm down. I calm down over there. We got to read. We got to read the chat. Quiet. I told you. Hold on to your wig. So, Precious B said she's his puppet, Pothain. Uh, Ricky Ricky G said that's why Kanye looking for his next victim because the daddy ain't having it. Having it. Oh, okay. You might be right. Oh, way to tie that in, Ricky G. That was really smart. Bay Bunny said Kanye doesn't care about Bianca. He loved her. That's why he doesn't care. He he loved Kim. That's why he doesn't care. And Maria Gomez says she is. She was dressing like that before they got married. Now, I don't know about all that. She clearly was not dressing like she's dressing now. I don't know about looking beautiful and killing it because her breasts look like they're down to her waist, if you ask me. Um, <laughs> but this is the thing. Let me tell you about the story that I like. I like this humanistic side that a father is like, okay, now hold up. When you got my wife out here in pantyhose with no underwear on, I didn't raise her like that. I'm concerned and I need to sit down and talk about what's the plan here because you're not going to use her for a year like you did the last young lady and then she don't have nothing she running around in the streets with within a one bedroom with a baby cradle sitting in the bedroom he wants to know what is your plan for my daughter and also is she safe so i like the fact that the father came and has, has entered into the chat now this is a deal she better check her father because the part that armand is right about is she does know what she's doing and she needs to let her father know that they have an understanding and to me for her, this is the biggest job she's ever had in Hollywood, whether she wants to be an actress or not. This is her biggest contract, and she's trying to hold on to it. So, Dad, please be quiet and come call me on my back line when Kanye's not here, and I'll give you all the tea. But in the meantime, don't be jeopardizing this because I'm getting good clothes. I eat good. I fly first class if I'm not on private, and I ain't got to worry about paying no bills right now. That's what she wants to tell her dad. So on that side, what our mind said, I do believe is true. But if it is it okay for a dad to step into the chat and say, "Hey, is my girl good?" so that she can, so he can get that text from her and say, "Dad, chill, I'm fine." Then so be it. Oh, child, well, this sounds like it's trouble in paradise. But speaking of troublesome relationships, Miley Cyrus is back in the news again, honey, reporting serious with her mother, uh, Tish, Tish, Tish Cyrus for marrying. Now, get this. Get this, listen, come closer, come closer to the TV screen for marrying her little sister's formal sugar daddy. What do you think? Is it strange for a mother to marry someone, uh, you know, like someone who her daughters have actually been with? Hell no, it's the Cyrus family. Do you know anything about the Cyrus family? They do weird stuff like this all the time. Hell, her daddy, Billy Ray Cyrus, is married to a woman 30 years, his his uh, his youth, his younger, what the hell you call that? His, the, the wife that he got now, the, the wife he got now is 30 years younger than him. The whole family do stuff like this. The daughter is 20. The mama's 55. She let that little girl date that sugar daddy at 55. That's 30 years just as well. She like, if it's good for your daddy, it's good for you. Now she done stole the sugar daddy because she was like, that 20-year-old daughter of mine don't want you. Come okay. over here and, and, and let me burp you for a little while. That's what this is. So this is business as usual for the Cyrus. If you are a Cyrus, you date or you marry 30. 30 years younger or 30 years older. But you're essentially sleeping. Like it's like y'all have y'all y'all are sharing penises, basically. It's essentially like you're sleeping with someone your daughter has slept with. Gross. Well, we don't know if they slept together. They said sugar daddy. Well, come on, you she had to give up something for that change. <laughs> now I think I think one of the bigger conversations is of, about how like sometimes mothers are jealous of their daughters. Like, did she feel like she wanted to sleep? behind her daughter or pull a man that her daughter has pulled because she was somehow jealous? You know, that, that could be interesting too, because I just don't understand why you would want to go after a man that your daughter has been with. It's just a little weird. So Liberty's, Liberty's mom said, Molly, mama wrong. 
<laughs> there is a man their child slept with. Okay, well, who would you talk about the daddy now? Don't just point the finger at the mama. D Love said he been in he been in the mama and the daughter. He been in the mama and the daughter. Oh, Lord. Okay. The latest celebrity news said, "Oh no, Tish, you done lost it." And then Sheeny Beanie said, "Miley's mother is crazy." And Tanya Christopher said, "Does that constitute them as trailer park yes. trash?" I just feel like at this point, don't they have way too much money to still be fooling around in the trailer parks? <laughs> Y'all better stop talking about the trailer park. Now, I lived in a mobile home. Y'all not going to talk about us like that. I started there. I didn't end there, though, now. Don't do me. And at this point, if I, if, if <laughs> and it wasn't a double wide. It wasn't a double wide. And it was eight of us living in there. And look, and my mother used to turn it into a daycare when we all left because she was a hustler. We built us a house with a pool, baby. But that's how it started. Oh my God. Well, coming up next, a mother, a mother's take on unconditional love. And later, you won't believe a woman's gift requirements after giving birth. Child, what is she asking for? <laughs> <laughs> Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome our special guest host, T.S. Madison. Hey, y'all. Hey, soulmates. Y'all still my friend? T.G.I.F. <laughs> you make me giggle like a schoolgirl. Live and interactive. Oh. Y'all been flirting all week, and it has not gone unnoticed by the soulmates. So might there be a little carryover after this a little situation? On Fox Soul. I will go visit Al wherever he is. He can take me out to dinner, and he can pay for my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. And you always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to TGIF, honey. All right, guys, <laughs> check this out. A mother explaining why she doesn't have unconditional love for her children. Let's take a look. I am 56 years old. <laughs> I have been up the hill and down the hill with some ungrateful, disrespectful kids. I refuse to go through it at this age in the years that I have left on this earth. You will be in a hospital sick and die and go to heaven or hell in your kids. I promise you will only grieve you for a little while. Oh my, my God, I almost choked on my drink with that one. <laughs> what do you think, Al? Uh-oh, she... we're gonna go to Armand on this one because you know, I'm old school. Go ahead, Armand, I can't wait to hear your thought about this. I just think she's bitter as hell. I think yeah, she's I bitter. <laughs> she's bitter. Like, I get what she's saying, but clearly she's upset. Like, clearly her kids don't, don't fool with her. Clearly, I, I don't know, my parents, they love me unconditionally, you know what I mean? And I just could never imagine being unloved unconditionally by my parents. I just feel like she's coming from a bitter place and she's coming from a selfish place. I feel like she wanted something from her kids and they probably didn't give it to her. And so now she's online acting as if she's, she seems like one of those selfish ass mothers. I mean, she is. She doesn't really care about her kids in the first place to me. She couldn't have cared to, to be in that energy. Like, I'm going to just live my life and, you know, my kids ain't going to care about me. Well, then, girl, they are a reflection of you. Clearly, so what kind of upbringing did you give them? What did you show them? So your kids are somewhat a reflection of you. So, girl, you were trash from the beginning. 
Oh, that's so mean. That's it. I, I have seen, I have seen um, women, I've seen mothers that did raise their kids, right? Made sure that they, you know, lived the best life that they could provide, got them through college, got them through, um, you know, their first jobs, you know, coming back home and all that stuff. And I've seen them be disrespected. So I, I've seen both sides of this story, but it's so interesting. What's interesting to me is regardless, and this is me showing my age, so I'm gonna just show my age right now. When I was coming through, it was respect your elders and honor your parents. And it was almost biblical. And I know that sounds corny. I know it sounds old, but I am corny and I am old. But when I was <laughs> growing up, you didn't disrespect your, your parents, your grandparents, and you didn't care. It, it wasn't an option. You didn't care how they treated you. People don't don't hold on to that as much anymore. They're like, okay, if my mom treat me bad, she doesn't talk, never taught me right, even though she may have been on drugs. No, she's dead to me. And so that's the issue that I have. You know, did she raise them right or wrong? Who knows? But if she did, there are still kids out here today that don't extend that same privilege that I learned to do, which was respect your elders and honor your parents. It's it's not like that anymore. Claude, what you think? Well, you know, you know, I've heard some parents say, listen, once you're 18, you're grown, you're out of my house, you're out of my hair, go live your life. And uh, maybe that may be this particular situation. I'm not sure how this woman has raised her children, but I could not fathom treating my mom in a way where she would be that way towards me. Yeah. yeah. The way it's set up here in my household, I'm always giving to my mom. My mom is literally somewhere like, I'm just going to put this next egg for quad. I'm just going to put this egg for quad. I'm like, mom. I gave it to you. So it, it's just, it just is a testament to the type of love that we have for each other where we're always looking out for one another. I, love I, that. I don't understand this ministry right here. Like, so let's read some of the comments, Quad. I'm sorry to cut you off. Fish Eye Jedi said, Mama is fed up. Kitty Southpaw said, no wonder the kids don't like her. Uh, PRT Diva said, if your kids don't fool with you, that means you probably were a trash mom. My mom was the best, can't relate. Shelby B said, I lost my mom in 2021 and I miss her very much. It's a pain that never goes away. Yep, sometimes you need to mend that. And lastly, Nicole Johnson said, everybody's story isn't the same and believe some kids are like that. Remember, people are human first. I disagree. I feel like we got to also admit that sometimes even your parents could be jealous of you because of the age thing. Some people are jealous of you. A lot of older people are jealous of people that are younger than them. And sometimes it could be your mm -hmm. own parents because it got to the point where she was talking about she's not going to stop her life or she's not going to be put anyone's happiness before hers because when she's dead and gone, the kids are not going to care about her be anymore. It sounds like she feels from top of way that she's getting older and her kids are, and her kids are starting to develop their own lives. And she wants to sit and be entertained by her kids every step of the way. And the kids are trying to say, hey, mom, I love you, but I have my own life to live. Maybe I have my own family. Maybe I'm doing my own things. And now she's bitter about it. That's what it sounds like to me. You cannot be bitter about getting old. We all well, might, we all gonna get there. Hold right? on now, go to the next day, Quad. Before we get into a little <laughs> argument up in here, go to the next day, Quad. Quad, go to the next day. <laughs> Listen, I will say this. You only get one mother, but here is the funny part. Chris Jenner says you can have more than one man. And recently she said she's not interested in possibly remarrying, me remarrying, not her nor Kim or Kendall at all. Okay, as we know, Chris has been in a long term relationship with Corey Gamble. Kim is allegedly now dating her sister's man child or past man, previous man, or maybe current man, I don't know, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. And Kendall is back. Hanging out again with her ex, Devin Booker. Um, is this a case that, listen, maybe successful women just are starting to kind of stray away from marriage? I mean, I got to tell you, like, I'm going to take a stab at this one first. I, everyone knows here I, I'm, I, I've been married and uh, divorced. Um, but but I still am, I, I do feel like uh, I'm going to get married again. And I'm a successful woman. But I do still want to have that type of unity that's recognized by, uh, you know, my that's country. Maybe another. I, I think I, I think I think you're right, and I think if if most if most black women really have this conversation, it's probably conversations they have with their girlfriends. 
they want a supporter. That was the best part about my marriage. I, I mean, I love the fact that when that door closed and we were at home, I had someone that had my back. I could share my problems with. We could strategize about life, how to move, how to build, how to acquire. Every woman wants to feel safe and and supported and they find that in marriage you know i think the younger generation are is not as committal and i get that but deep down you do want someone in your corner every day to support you protect you help provide for you even if you got even if you're the breadwinner in the family you want that other person there that that you can count on and if we're really honest, you don't want to share them with anybody. <laughs> no, you don't. And I, and I think sometimes you think twice. You, know, <laughs> you got those papers, honey, because you know what? The coins come out to the papers. Maybe you don't want to mess up. Armand, what about you? How you feel about I, this? I think we're talking about a woman whose husband passed away, um, and then she married another guy that was a, an athlete. Then he transitioned into a woman. Then that mm -hmm. that. They divorced then, you know, there was a split there. So I think at some point in Hollywood, for sure, like marriages just don't last. And I think marriage is becoming a thing where it's becoming overrated and it's becoming more of a problem and more of an expense than it is uh, something of love and luxury and happiness. So I think women are starting to say, listen, these things don't work anyway. I mean, we can love each other and we can we can be in relationship, but we don't have to do all this paperwork because nine times out of 10, this is not going to last. And I just think that people want to cut the BS and they don't want to drag it on because it, it becomes so messy towards the end. You know, it's easy to get married, but it's very hard to get divorced. You're going into the marriage or going into the relationship because it's not a marriage, but you're going into the relationship saying this is going to go wrong. I mm. have to fight with you. It's I... probably about 10 years, maybe, and that's on the high end and maybe two on the low end. Why mm. are we like that. What is happening? I don't, I don't think like that. I, I personally don't think like that. And I hope that those who understand and, and, and believe in the institution of marriage don't think like that. Quite, I don't think you thought like that when you got into your and marriage I, at first. And I, and, I, and I have been married and divorced, and it was a tumultuous marriage towards the end, honey. It was a big fool. But I still got to tell you, no matter what I went through in that marriage, I still want to be married again, and I'm going yeah. to get married again. I will yeah. let you in on some tea when we go to commercial break, okay? But for right <laughs> now, this next story. Okay, now this is someone who should never be around a child again. Okay, it is a Catholic teacher in Brooklyn who has been recently arrested. Okay, the teacher allegedly put a three-year-old in a cardboard box, locked him in a closet, and told him the Grinch was coming for him. The teacher then had allegedly also been wearing a scary Grinch mask, okay, to scare the children. What do you make of this, Al? Well, I'm gonna be honest, cause I'm the only, I'm an educator and I'm gonna be honest. My brothers and sisters used to do stuff like this all, to me all the time at, the, at, the, at home where they were babysitting for me and stuff. But this type of stuff simply cannot happen down at the schoolhouse. You know, this is this is absolutely unacceptable. And it saddens me that it has to be a, a young, female, black, educated teacher that has done this. Um, I think that, you know, and it's also taxpayers. This is taxpayers dollars. This school is run by taxpayers and the government. So that is even super bad. I think that this whole school system and from the administrator, principal, to the teachers, and everyone in between need to be investigated. Because from what we understand after learning about this incident, this school is known for bullying, and also the principal is known for being excessively strict and unwilling to um, compromise. So investigate them all, maybe they need to clean house and, and get rid of them and, and restructure. So if this is the culture of the school, then I'm right. sure- Right, that's what they're saying. That's what the- Mm -hmm. The teacher That's... had nothing wrong with the behavior. This is right. the culture of the school. Armand, yeah. you have any thoughts on Locking that? my kids up in a box and putting them in a the closet. This is crazy. It, we're 2024. This is not 1986, 1800s. I don't know. This is two, 2024. Don't put my damn kid nowhere in the closet. Don't dress up like nothing. Don't do none of that. Call me, and I'll do all the dressing up and scolding. You don't scold my kid, period. Don't go too far with it. And at the end of the day, she's lucky that that person's family member, mom didn't come up there and whoop her. Because that's what my mama would have did. <laughs> my mama would have been up at that school, for sure. 
when I think about it as a young child, it's traumatizing. This is traumatizing for someone to take you as a small kid alone by yourself Mm -hmm. and lock you up in a closet or put you in a cardboard box. Listen, I am not here for this. I do think that there needs to be an arrest. I think the culture of the school uh, needs to be completely rewritten. As Al said, let's do some 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 house cleaning. I I think she was arrested. She was arrested and she was charged with child abuse. So got the arrest and the (laughs) charge. All right, well, guys, listen, I want you guys to keep it locked because up next, a woman's gift requirements after giving birth and later a mother, a mother celebrated her child, her child's first birthday in an unconventional way. Chad, got all type of hair weaves and wigs and lace from. <laughs> and it's just a cool. <laughs> Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome our special guest host, T.S. Madison. Hey, y'all. Hey, soulmates. Y'all still my friend? T.G.I.F. <laughs> you make me giggle like a schoolgirl. Live and interactive. Ooh. Y'all been flirting all week, and it has not gone unnoticed by the soulmates. So might there be a little carryover after this a little situation? On Fox Soul. I will go visit Al wherever he is. He can take me out to dinner, and he can pay for my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back. Listen, guys, a couple who makes up to $70,000 per month is claiming that they feel broke. I don't know how the hell they feel broke, but they claim that, child. Okay, the couple has been married for 25 years and claim that their disagreements over money have put a strain on their relationship. Do you believe that some people will never be happy no matter how much coins they make, how much they're in the bag, how much moolah cheddar cheese they got? They just will never be happy. Armand, how about you? Yeah, money doesn't, you know, create happiness. Some people say, I mean, I feel like if I had $70,000 of money, I'd be happy. So I don't know. They just must be not managing their money well. I don't see how you could bring in that much money and not be happy. I'd find the happy every month. Well, I'll tell you this. I have made seventy thousand plus a month, and 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 depending on your lifestyle, it's hard. It is hard, Quad Miss Quad. You've made this money. Don't be act. Don't be sitting over there sipping on nothing acting like you have never done this. It's it's crazy because if you live in a ten million dollar, if you live in a two million dollar house, that's ten thousand dollars a month. Your cars, two two nice cars, is five thousand dollars a month. You look up food, is six thousand dollars a month. You look up. All your money's gone. So I get it, but those are rich people problems. So I can't be saying anything different. Feel like seventy thousand dollars. We can't find happiness with seventy thousand dollars a month. I mean, every thirty days, honey, you got another seventy just hitting you upside the right? head. <laughs> find a way to be happy with that hit upside the head. It's a seventy thousand dollar hit. You understand what I'm saying? Uh-huh. I can't understand. And then they're saying that they're older, so I don't know exactly how old they are. But how much money do you need? Why are you fussing and fighting, pulling out the first, uh, the pulling out hair and everything like that? I don't, I don't get that. I don't get that. But it's It looks like married couples are going through it, baby. They are going through it lately. A husband received backlash after urging his wife 
to give up on her dreams of becoming a social media influencer and saying that she would be infinitely more useful Cooking and cleaning, and child, get into it a fall face first. I got to tell you, the mm -hmm. wife has, has been trying and failing for the last past two years, making money as a mom influencer. Now, I, I, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Maybe she just needs to reroute how she is approaching social media. But to say that she will be better off served cooking and cleaning, you need a maid. You need a housekeeper. You need a home pair. You don't need a wife. I'm confused as to why he is like just basically crapping on her dreams and not supporting her. I'm well, I think I think I think we need to turn the page on that. That was wrong for him to say. I think after two years he was fed up bringing, you know, and she needed to contribute in different ways. But look, you're here now, beautiful. Your your article, whatever your thing went viral. You're an influencer now. Get into it. Get the bag. Stop crying about what he said. Turn the page. You got help now, sir. Y'all make this thing big now because everybody's talking about your next thing. All right. But I'll say it, honey, so let me just move along, but I got to scoot it all along, okay? A woman goes by Brooklyn Baby on Instagram recently shared her list of requirements for sacrificing her body to give a man a baby. She says she expects either a new car or a house as a push present and for the man to get a tattoo of her face on his body. Now, listen. Them some requirements, baby. Them some requirements. And girls normally get a <laughs> bracelet, a little necklace, you know what I mean? They might get, you know, a, a, a shoes or something like that, nice handbag and things of that nature. And all of those things are fine. Now, I guess this is all relative, depending on what type of man you have. Now, if you have a multi, multi, multi millionaire, then there's nothing for him to get you a car and there's nothing for him to get you a house. In fact, he should probably already get you that before you got pregnant. But if you're just dealing with our everyday man, come on, this is a a bit excessive. This is a bit excessive. And this is coming from a woman who has all her things, honey. When I pull up and pull out, I pops out. <laughs> <laughs> the face tattoo is crazy. I can well, be what you think. The face tattoo is crazy. I think she's out of her mind for the face tattoo. But I mean, a car, I get it. You got it in a house, I get it. Uh, but a face tattoo, absolutely not. I'll never get anyone's name, face tattoo, nothing on me, ever. But a car, a house, something like that, sure. You know, put the baby up, but a face tattoo, crazy. Al, anything? I'm going to read some of the comments. So our dog said she looks absolutely crazy in that first pic. Let's see that pitch, big production. Soul Set Apart said she better cook and clean for Instagram. <laughs> 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 and let's see, we got one more maybe, Kayla. Kayla, you got one more for me? One more, one more. And Jalismo, Jalismo said fact it, facts. If I'm going to risk my womb, I need it all. All right, Quad, take us to break. Yeah, I got a lot more to say about this topic, but we'll leave that for another day. But coming up next, a mother celebrates her child's first birthday in an unconventional way. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie, the freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome our special guest host, T.S. Madison. Hey y'all, hey soulmates, y'all still my friend? T-G-I-F. You make me giggle like a schoolgirl. Live and interactive. Y'all been flirting all week and it has not gone unnoticed by the soulmates. So might there be a little carryover after this a little situation? On Fox Soul. I will go visit Al wherever he is. He can take me out to dinner and he can pay for my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. 
My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back. A mother got some backlash after giving her daughter a quick weave to celebrate her first birthday. Do you find this to be a little bit inappropriate, Al? I, I'm not a parent. I wouldn't want my wife to do this to my child. So I do believe it's inappropriate. I, I can't get with this one. And then she wondered, because she talks about in this video that, that they called CPS on her already. Oh, so I'm already questioning her mother's skills because she makes that reference before she does the weave. I've said this a hundred times on this show before. Please, 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 they need to bring back, Kawhi, you know about this. I know that Armand doesn't. Please bring back home economics back to the education. <laughs> I know about home economics. Oh. Because home economics <laughs> used to teach, you know, mothers how to be mothers, like what's required for kids, how to cook. Look out of clip, you know. I think we need to bring that back. That's my opinion. I'm not, is, it, is it too soon for a quick weave? I mean, what's an appropriate? I, mean, I, I think the baby is first of all, can we just talk about the baby is super, super cute? But if you want the baby's hair to have a chance in the future, you can't put all that glue and stuff on it because she'll have no edges later on in life and she'll be upset. So I think that just to sacrifice the baby's hair growth, no quick weave, but she's so cute. What about her self-esteem? She's gonna have. She's gonna believe that she's got to have hair that is straight like that in <laughs> order to be made over and to feel cute. Child, That's what I'm just wait about till she get to high school and find friends. That's gonna happen in a quick weave or not. It's happening. That's what happens when you grow All up. All I gotta say is just take a page out of Beyonce Knowles' book and keep put book and keep the girl's hair as natural for as long as you possibly can. Look at how beautiful Blue Ivy's hair is now. Everybody has something to say about. Oh, look at Beyonce doing her hair. She needs to comb her hair. Honey, Beyonce said no. She's gonna be Rapunzel by the time she's eighteen. Uh... How about that? <laughs> All right. Well, before we go, let's play a little game, hit or miss, with some of the unique looks during Paris Fashion Week. Let's cue the music. First up, we have Kylie Jenner at the Mason Margiela Show. Hit or miss? I say I'm hit. Give her, yeah, I'm going to give her a hit. I love the silhouette of her body. Oh my goodness, everything is where it's supposed to be. Love the color, it fits like a glove. She looks great. Is that wet mm -hmm. hair look too? I love that. All right, real sexy for the girls, honey. Up next, we have Noah Cyrus at the John Paul Gaultier show. Or miss. Unless that's a piece from uh, John Paul Gaultier, I'm gonna say that's a miss. She looks like a ghost meeting a witch or something. I didn't like it. I don't like that drape over top of the red. That's a miss for me. I'll yeah. go ahead. I feel like it fits her aesthetic. I feel like it goes with who she is. So it looks good on her. Yeah, it's a miss for me. I feel like when I see this, I just want to crawl up in my bed. Let's go to Jennifer Lopez at the Valentino show. Hit or miss? It's a I miss like for me. I feel like it's a hit. She's always regal. She's always royal. This is really beautiful, and I'm pretty sure it's a probably the show that she went to. I would have liked to have seen more body, but definitely not a miss. That's a hit. I think it's sophisticated. It's clean, classy. You can never go wrong with black, and it's Jennifer Lopez, honey. She did that. Julia Fox at the Mugler show. Hit or miss? Who is that? Is she performing or is she attending? Which one? <laughs> She's a always ball man. I'm gonna say I'm not, it's just too over the top for me. I don't know. It's unnecessary. It's a miss. Well, to her defense, I had an opportunity to cast all the looks that people were going to that particular show, and everything was a bit whimsical. I think the thing was to be a bit whimsical, but it was still be a bit of a miss for me. It's like Black Swan meeting the Pink Panther. Like okay, she looked me. like she looked like she should come with a bottle service at yeah. the club. That's what yeah. she looks like, Now I don't know what you're talking about, and you tried to save her in this outfit, but she looked like she going to a circus. Yeah. Oh 
But let's get into the one of the only herself, honey. Okay. Yes. Naomi Campbell at the Balmain show. It's, it's a hit or miss. It's hitting all the way for me, honey. It's I'm going here. I love anything Naomi. So she looks good. I love the fit. I love the jacket. I love everything about it. I love Naomi Campbell. Hit. Yeah, I'll, I'll give I'll give Naomi a hit. But I them flowers look like around her neck or however she's holding that up. Look like it's heavy and hurting. Um, other than that, you know, Naomi can't do any wrong, and Naomi can walk any show, anytime, anywhere. And let's just talk about her, the fact that she never ages. Naomi her skin looks amazing. Flawless, yeah. flawless. Well, let's go to the grand girl herself, honey. Bad girl, Riri. This is Riri at the Dior show. Is this a hit or a miss? I don't like this one, and I love everything Rihanna. It's just too, it, she looks big in this. I don't like this. Well, the rumor like has it she might be pregnant, right? Again, so let's let's let's. I, 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 she looks like she's going to church. Mm, I don't like. Or she looks like she's going to church with that hat on quad. I don't like that. Now, right now, it's the design. It's the structure of the piece. I'm telling you, she did her thing. But that was fun, guys. I want to say thank you so much to my co-host Al Renners. Love you, love you, love you. And Armand Wiggins, honey, you did yeah. that. And thank, thank you. you all for joining us tonight. Thanks for watching. We really do appreciate you. And you can watch us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Fox Soul Face Off. We'll see you tomorrow.